So we would write every, you know, every weekend. She was in town, we'd write a song. Um, Tell me, how many songs were you in at this point? When did video games, what, what number of songs was video games? Um, well, we wrote it in July. So that we and wrote it. Doing since first, yeah, so it was like probably song five or six, maybe, cool. in our sort of journey. I think, I think that's another thing that uh, people, I mean, in what we do, we get, we put in songwriting sessions and if you don't come up with the goods on the first session, you, you might not get another one. And you, you don't get to song five. And it's so weird. The history is there for everyone to see that songwriting relationships take a little bit of nurturing. I always show this bag of, I don't always, ugh, this is a bag of mini discs. It's crazy how many there are. <laughs> yeah. And it is rehearsals of our first, basically, Carver to the first Kaiser Chiefs album with a bit of the second Kaiser Chiefs album. And that is how long it takes to to actually get to 10 songs. Each one of those is 75 minutes or something, and they're full. And there's wow. probably 250 of them. So yeah. that's the that's the numbers. It doesn't work one-to-one. One. The ratio is not one-to-one no. one song, one smash. It's more like one-to-100. See, I always remember... The, <laughs> one-to-five in your case. <laughs> I always remember this quote, and I think it was Paul Weller um, said, "You, you know, you can write a song in fifteen minutes, but it's fifteen years and fifteen minutes." Yeah, exactly. That's Which, a great quote. It's a great quote because you can you you have the tools to to write a song in. I mean, I I don't think I've ever written anything in fifteen minutes that of any. Back for good was twenty. Was it? <laughs> that was the. Uh, that's what he always said. I think. Really, 20 minutes. But, you know, it's it's not 20 minutes. It's no. all the experience and all the ideas that you've had before clicking into one thing. For, yeah. And, and that's that's a, that's just experience, and that's, you know, it's brilliant. And that's the whole 10,000 hours thing, you know, of, like, yeah. putting the hours in and whatever. Yeah. Um, okay, so... So what were we saying? So five... So, yeah, about five songs in, I guess, video games was that. And then... She made the video while you were there, right? Eh? The famous well, she, video. So we we wrote it that July or whatever in 2010, and then it was released. She put it out the following summer with a little video. Cool. Because she could, she was actually struggling to get a record deal. Um, oh, because yeah. and and she, so she thought putting the video out might help. Yeah. So it was a it was basically just let's put something out and you know and the, and whoever decided it was video games i don't know it wasn't so right. behind you people who are not watching this because we i've got a, we're doing this on zoom so you um you got a piano right behind you there yeah can you give me i remember <laughs> you played this to me on on my piano it's such a buzz can you play me the uh, the intro the intro um oh god if what if i make a mistake One more time. It's brilliant. It gives me chills, honestly. It gives me chills hearing that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thanks so, for that. All right, you're welcome. That sounded really good in my headphones. I might try this. <laughs> I might try this mic positioning for, for later. And then, but then you became the guy that did video games. Yeah. And that was incredible, right? Yeah, so she put it out. Because in... that wasn't just a, that's not just a cut. That yeah. is um, a genre. Uh, ch that's a world changing song because it had its own. Sad Core was invented. Yeah. And uh, well, that, that, that song went around the world. Yeah. and It did go around the world. That song went around the world. It was crazy because I remember the whole scenario was so weird and, and it kind of gives me chills thinking about it because I remember. There was one day when I was going down to London on the train. I was actually on the train and Fern Cotton played video games for the first time on Radio 1. Like in, I think she had an afternoon show or something. Were you listening? Did you know it was on? I didn't. I, didn't, I couldn't listen because I was she on the She had, uh, I remember very well, it was the 10 a.m. on Radio was 1. It 10 okay, she so it was 10 a.m. So I was on the train from Lincoln going down and I remember hearing that she'd played it. And I had a session at Sony's studio and I remember going in there and then going online and finding the BBC iPlayer or whatever and then listening back to it and just completely losing it because it was like... In what way? Excitement well, or crying like, or... 
I mean, it was, it was, no, it was amazing, but I was just, I was like having an out of body experience, you know, like <laughs> someone, it was like I was shaking, you know, the emotion the you know, it was like relief. It was like everything. It was like everything you'd sort of, you know, yeah. you wanted this for so long, you know, because yeah. um, I, you know, I, I started in music when I was 17. I joined a band when I was 17 and this, I was 37 when video games was released. That's brilliant. Well, no, when video games was on the radio. And so Fern Cotton played it, and she went on this massive diatribe. The whole thing was like eight minutes long. <laughs> Talked about it and played the she song. She was incredible for a new artist. Like. Yeah, amazing. I'd love to meet her, you know. To, I actually yeah, want to yeah. thank her, or just to sort of go, you know, you completely changed my, you know, That's brilliant. the way my world panned out. Brilliant yeah. artists invite you into their world. Yeah, and, and, you, and you dive in, and you dive in with them. And, and uh, you know that it's not about... It's it's some it's obviously a lot about the music because it music, but when you're young, especially, you want to have something that that you can really get into. So something like the Stone Roses, you know, you wanted every bit of it, and same with Lana. And that video just demonstrated it's so good that she made that herself because that was she couldn't have explained to anybody else. Hey, can you make it a bit more this and a bit more yeah. that and. No. You can't do that over email. She no, I remember her playing me footage um, of it, and, and it's funny because she actually made a video for "On Our Way," that first song we wrote, right? And it was all the same footage <laughs> because she just had this thing, and this was the great thing about her. It was like this is it. This is what it is. Yeah. Because she would, I remember the writers around that time. I'd speak to other writers, you know, around the time who were working with, other, you know, with with Lana, other writers. And, I was, you know, some of them would say she's always talking about diamonds and, you know, and the lyric, they were always kind of complaining that she writes the same thing all the time. Yeah. And it's like, well, that's how you make a concept record. Yeah. It? How you make a world. You're using a, you're using a, a vernacular that that creates the whole thing, you know, it's like a tapestry or whatever. And well, I think it's kind um, of fascinating. And a lot of young artists, they're like, they don't even think that way, you know. They don't. They don't think about like tell, putting a record together, but because I don't think albums have the thing as they they used to. That you know, it doesn't. They're not as important. Yeah, of- but even just coming out as as an artist, you you can't come out just with a song and go, "This is it." No, you never have. I mean, from the earliest, from Elvis, you know. If Elvis had just looked like some bloke that worked at Nat West, it wouldn't have worked. <laughs> no. <laughs> and if Lana didn't, you know, if there wasn't this sort of aura surrounding her and, and the visuals that she put up and the way she looked and, and what she was writing about and, the, you know, it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have had the impact that it did. And also it was artist led as well, which is so important. Exactly. But it's interesting. I, th- I feel like, you know, Lana kind of opened the door and then kind of, I was thinking about it, like then Royal, I think Royals was just after that, perhaps with, um, oh God, I've forgotten the name. Lord. Lord, yeah. And I think that was another sort of step, you know what I mean? It kind of moved music because Lord, yeah, right. Lord was Lord was dark pop, you know, it was, it was, it was pop, but it was like, you know, it, it wouldn't have happened. I don't think without maybe the base of Lana. Having okay. A, yeah, yeah. True. True. I, I, I feel like there's a, it's like a trajectory. I, f- I feel like Lana, I think you're right. I think Lana did ama- amazing things. She kind of changed the direction of what was going mm. on at the time. Um, and that's okay. kind of amazing to be a part of that. 